and what you said about real estate is fascinating because that's when I think through where does this go in a couple of years? Where does this trillions of dollars of wealth that's, you know, or like the, the $500 trillion, you know, fiat thing that's leaching into every other asset class. Um, I feel like real estate has got to be a huge winner here because to me, it's like when I make all this money in crypto, when I have all this value, like at some level, tangible real estate where I can live, that's awesome is, is in some way an interesting hedge. So I don't know, just personally, yeah. the way I've been thinking about my structuring, my portfolio is like, I want to get crypto. I want to get collectibles. I want to get rare sneakers. I want to get rare art. I want to get rare non-fungible tokens. And then I also want to get a bunch of hard real estate where I actually live with maybe like a bunch of water and food in the basement. <laughs> I mean, the key here is there's two types of real estate. There's trophy real estate and there's commercial real estate. You don't want to own a bunch of warehouses that pay rent that are valued based upon the rents because all commercial no. real estate has a lease and all those leases have a clause which says the rent cannot go up faster than CPI. So all long commercial real estate leases, office leases, et cetera, have a CPI cap if the money supply expands by 15% and the CPI is capped at 2%, they're all going to have a negative 13% real yield. So commercial real estate for rents is not a safe bet. You might as well own long bonds. They look like long debt. They've yeah. got credit risk and they've got duration. It's, it's like the mortgage. Risk. You wanted it like it's not a floating rate. It's a fixed rate. And then you're fixing it, betting that, like, that any dilution or acceleration and in inflation that happens, you're fixed and just screwed. That's why I'm like, even when I sign a lease that's locked in at the same price for yeah. 12 or 14 months, that's going to not be a thing. Like, look at what they do in like Brazil. They'll pay you every single day because the currency is diluting so much. So I think there's almost an entire structural generational fall off in these real estate contracts where they had a fixed rate. And it's like, bro, this is whack. Like the dilution, like you should be raising my rent 1% a month, you know? Yeah. So own trophy real estate, own that beachfront house on the shore that you will live in the rest of your life yeah. because the value and use to you will keep going up in the local currency as the currency collapses. I, I think you're thinking about it the right way. And um, I think that uh, as more people think about it, right? I think we just crossed a hundred million people that have Bitcoin. You know, as more people think about it, the light bulb will go off. And I think we'll go to 200 million. And I think within five years, we'll have a billion people that will own property, Bitcoin, maybe on their mobile phone, on a hardware device. They'll have, they'll have uh, some kind of Bitcoin that they custody somehow. It'll be a billion people. It'll be the most broadly held asset class or, or investment asset in the world because where else are you going to put your life savings where you can take physical custody of it. You know, the problem with um, the problem with real estate is, you know, you own land in California, maybe you want to leave California, maybe they tax it. You can't move a million dollars worth of land in California to Wyoming if the tax rate is better, right? So you're kind of stuck. You know, you own baseball cards, maybe everybody else stops watching baseball and the, and the value of your baseball card collection falls a bit. It's not you know, we don't all have the same opinions about baseball, football, basketball, hockey, and it changes. So I really like a house that you're going to live in the rest of your life because you know you're going to like it. But, but even then, you're taking risk. Will your grandchildren want to live in that house? And if you buy that house in Florida, you're going to pay 2% tax on it every year. So go figure in, in uh, 30, 35 years, right? If they keep reappraising the house, you're going to pretty much pay a million dollars in taxes on a million dollar property. The beauty of a wow. million dollars of Bitcoin is you don't have to keep it in Florida. You don't have to keep it in California. And your grandson or granddaughter will want it because it's pure monetary energy. That's, that's what makes it a compelling part of the portfolio. Um, by the way, keep, keep the Picasso if you got it. Keep the other cool things, buy things that bring you joy and give you immense utility. It's not a bad idea. You got to live your life, but just be careful about the things that are, that are valued based upon a forecast of the discounted value of cash flows in a currency, especially you know, like, like, for example, golly, would you want to own uh, a bunch of industrial warehouses in Argentina as the peso collapses against the dollar? No. It's like, you're, you know, it, it can, things can always get worse. Okay, that's my, my saying. So you can make a bad investment decision, but you can make a worse investment decision. 
So you got to think about these things and look out a decade, look out a few decades. And if you look out long and then you come back, then you normally, you have a good rational common sense basis to evaluate all your options. Wow.